Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Risner here from The Disorderly. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Risner, N-I-C-K-R-I-Z-N-E-R, Disorderly Media on Twitter, Disorderly E-N-T on Facebook. And this is the mid-season MLB recap. So obviously, we're, we're coming off the All-Star break. Not really mid-season. I think we're about 60% of the way through the season. But whatever. Best not to get caught up in the semantics. So for those who have been following, every single Monday, I've been doing a uh, recap article of sorts. I've been doing you know, uh, basically a little blog where I let my homer shine a little bit. I'm a huge Red Sox fan. A good year to be a Red Sox fan as well. But I, I, I'm you know, talking about the Red Sox, the league, the division, whatever. little thing in a blog. Then I do the top three plays from the previous week. I, I, I sort of highlight the best series to watch in the upcoming week. And I update my power rankings. And I've been doing that every single Monday. It's a long season. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, I've never attempted to do a weekly MLB post before. I've written about you know, sports, TV, music, whatever, for, for years now, six, seven years, maybe even longer. So it, it's been a, a long time doing this, but it, I, you know, I haven't been basically diving this deep into baseball ever in my life. Now I'm a huge Red Sox fan. I've followed them my entire life, but this is the first time I've really dove into the entire league to this extent. And I, I would like to think that I've, I've learned quite a bit about the inner league. It's a weird sport. So I'll say this baseball even more than, than than other sports. Obviously, you have your home team, and that's who you follow. But baseball is very, very, very segregated within certain markets. So it's like if you're a Red Sox fan, you pay attention to the Red Sox, and that's it. You're probably keeping an eye on the, the Yankees. If you're in a wild card race, you might have a you know somewhat of idea of, of who else is, is chasing that wild card spot, who you might play in that play in game, things like that, right? So that, that's what you pay attention to. You're not really paying attention to the rest of the league. Specifically, like National League. Like, if you're a Red Sox fan, you're probably not paying attention to the National League. And that goes with everything. So, I, I, know I have friends that are, you know, Cincinnati Reds fans, believe it or not. And then those fans, they, they pay attention to just that division, and then that's it. That's the entire thing. So, it, you know, you're watching football or something, and you're a huge fan of the Cowboys. You're probably watching all the football on Sundays. That's kind of how it's structured. There's less games, it's less, uh, you know, daunting to follow the entire league. So, people tend to do that. So, it's just an interesting little thing where. You know, I'm diving into the the interleague play for the first time and paying attention to all the teams and all the divisions and you know who, who's coming out of the freaking NL Central or whatever. You know, I'm doing doing that for the first time ever. Are other people? I don't know. So this could be a recap that that might you know if you're not if you're not following podcasts like this, you might be you might be finding things that you literally did not know before. You know, who's to say? But let's just get into it. So first of all, I'll start with my Red Sox. The Red Sox and the Yankees are both. You know, basically beating everyone. Two best records in baseball, though I will say the Astros are sneaking up with the Yankees right now, but you know, kind of irrelevant because they're in a different division. But the Red Sox and Yankees, you know, it's really disappointing because you have these two teams who are the best two teams in baseball, pretty undisputably. I think most people, most people would agree that those are the two best teams in baseball. And one of those teams, because of the wild card structure, is going to be forced to play this one game play in game. So if the season ended today, the Red Sox would win the division, the Yankees would be in this one game play in game. Currently against the Mariners, there's we'll get to that in a second, but there's a lot of things going on there as well. Uh, but you you basically have the system which sucks because in the AL Central, the first place Cleveland Indians are ten games above five hundred. They have a five fifty one win percentage, fifty four and forty four overall. I mean that's good for the lowest win percentage out of any of the division leaders so far this year. Uh, there's some close contenders there, but a, a lot of the people who are you know right along that border, I think they're actually uh, on the verge of making moves. I'll get to them in a second. The National League. However, you basically have the, the Cleveland Indians, who I guess are somewhat deserving of being in first place with a 551 win percentage. Behind them, the Twins, the Tigers, the White Sox, and the Royals are all sub-500. Pretty severely sub-500, to be honest with you. The Royals and the White Sox are, you know, the bottom of the barrel, you know, bottom two, three teams maybe all year. Really, really not doing well at all. The Twins and the Tigers are, are, are way out of it as well. They're, you know, the Twins are 10 games back, nine and a half games back from the Cleveland Indians at this moment. So... It's just really bad. It's a very, very weak division, and it sucks that we can't have you know a, a temporary re reordering of of, of these uh, playoff teams. You know, because realistically, if you look at the wild card right now, obviously the the Yankees are in the wild card slot out of the AL East. They have a six forty nine win percentage, sixty three wins, thirty four losses, five games back from the Red Sox, but you know otherwise doing very, very well. And the Yankees are going to be in a one game play on game the way this ends right now. They obviously have a better record than the first place Cleveland Indians. Moving to the AL West, the Seattle Mariners are currently in that wild card spot. So right now, the Astros winning the division, going to the playoffs. They have a, a 647 win percentage, 66 wins, 36 losses, just a hair behind the Yankees, but more or less in the uh, top two, three teams in baseball right now. So the Astros 
absolutely deserve to go to the playoffs. In second place right now, you have the Seattle Mariners. 60 wins, 40 losses, a 600 win percentage, significantly higher than the, the Cleveland Indians. And then one step further back than that, you have the Oakland Athletics who are making a surge right now. I'm actually going to talk about them in a little bit, but... The Athletics could very well pass the Mariners. They're three games back from the Mariners right now. They'll be fighting it out for their playing spot. They also have a much better record than the first place Cleveland Indians. So you have one, two, three, four, five teams with better records than the first place Cleveland Indians. One of those five teams isn't even going to make the playoffs, and the other two have to play a one-game play-in game against each other just for a shot at a regular series. Now, I understand extending the wild card to this one-game play-in and giving two teams a chance, but realistically, that's a really shitty position to be in. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to be in that position where... You know, you have a bad day, or, or you know, your your lights out pitcher. Say the Red Sox are in there, and Chris Sale for some reason gets shelled, and because he had one bad game, we don't have a chance of winning the World Series, even if we potentially could be one of the best, if not the best team in baseball, and, and you know, actually go win the World Series, but we don't get the chance. It's a shitty situation, and unfortunately, that's the reality of the American League right now. The Cleveland Indians are going to scoot right into a full playoff series, and that's just something you got to deal with. Now, I do believe that the Red Sox will hold on, and I do believe that the Red Sox will. Uh, win the division. I, I do think that, but obviously there's a chance the Yankees could pass them. Either way, there's no, literally no chance. I, I don't even know if it's a statistical possibility with a third place Rays being 19 games back from first place right now. I don't know if it's a possibility for the rest of the Yankees to miss the playoffs. I think both of them will get in. Obviously, one's going to be relegated to that play-in game, but you should have the Red Sox and Yankees in the playoffs, no problem. Indians are shooing as well because of the, the whole situation we just described. Let's talk about the AL West because the AL West is a very interesting... I don't know. So the Astros seem like they're going to win it. Although, to be fair, they're not that far ahead of anyone else. You know, the Mariners are five games back. That's the same distance between the Red Sox and the Yankees. It's very possible that the Mariners could overcome that deficit and end up getting first place. But also in the mix are the Oakland Athletics. Now, the Athletics ha- have really come on strongly. They've won seven out of their last 10. Uh, you know, really great road record, 31 and 21 away. They've beaten some really great teams. They, they performed very well against the Red Sox. Uh, I don't remember how they did against the Yankees, to be honest. And I know this is my recap post. So I'm too lazy to look it up. But obviously, they did they did well against the Red Sox. And, and you know, we got the 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 no hitter from Manea, and they just have good pitching, good 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 uh, a good lineup. They're, they're a dangerous team, and they keep getting better and better. And I think almost sensing this, they're really making a push to round out that team and you know get them playoff ready and, and try to really go for it this year because I think they think that they have a rare opportunity to really to make a run this year in the playoffs not just get into that play-in game but really make a run uh it's pretty evident from a couple of days ago they they made a big trade they traded two of their prospects away and got familia from the mets they're their closer so you know that that really rounds out their game i feel like their their starting pitchings were pretty good the, the bullpen was a little suspect and now you have familia coming in as a closer that really shores up their bullpen you know they just seem like they're, they're, they're really stringing it together right now and i don't think they're to be taken lightly i think that they will I'll make a prediction right now. I think they'll definitely be in that playing game. I don't think they have enough being eight games out of first place. There's not that much time left in the season. I don't think they have enough time to, you know, take the lead in that division. And I assume the Astros will hold on, but I don't know the the Mariners could pass them. I think whoever drops out of that, that lead, whether it's the Astros or the Mariners, one of those two teams is going to win. I think the other one's not going to make the plans playoffs at all. I don't know. I, I just feel like athletics are coming on strong right now. They're obviously making the moves to make that push. And I think the athletics will end up in that playing game. So they'll be facing the Red Sox of the Yankees. Two obviously difficult matchups. I think that the between the, the the Athletics and the you know Red Sox, like I said, they they have had a number before. They could do it again. So that scares me in a one game playing. I assume I almost assume they'd play Manea. He's one of their better pitchers. Um, just the mental edge of having the no hitter. I don't know. Uh, you might see Chris Sale versus Manea in this situation. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm gonna hope that the Red Sox win. The Yankees end up in second place. So the Yankees can deal with the the athletics. And quite frankly, it's going to be a competitive game between those two. But of course, that's only one half of the league, one half of the equation. We have the National League, a little bit weaker than the American League, kind of always is. Um, You know, that's not to say the good teams can't make runs and and win World Series. Obviously, that happens all the time. However, if you just look at it as a whole, it's more competitive, but only because there's no superstar teams that have run away with divisions like the Astros, like the the Red Sox and the Yankees. But I do think the teams that we thought were going to emerge have emerged. The NL East is still very competitive. We can get to that in a second because that's that's the more confusing one. But, you know, the Brewers spent a lot of time in first place in the NL Central. The Cubs have come on strong now. They have a three and a half game lead. They're in first place. I think the Cubs will hold on. I think the Cubs will hold on. I think they'll keep getting better and better. I think a lot of people assume that they would be first place in the NL Central. But, you know, that was the most competitive division for most of this year. You had the, the Cubs, the Brewers, the Pirates, and the Cardinals all in the mix at one point or another. And to be honest, there's still not anyone out of the mix. 
So you have the, the Cardinals who are in fourth place. They're only eight and a half games back from first place. And you see a lot of that in the National League. There's a lot of you know very, very close tiebreakers between the top three, four teams in a division. And although the Cubs are in first place right now, and I think they're coming on strong, they also won seven out of their last 10 games. I honestly think that the Cubs will hold on, but it's not it's not a sure thing. And and you know we could be seeing a wild card team come out of this division as well. And if that's the case, then that makes that that race extra tight. Can the Brewers hold on to that wild card spot with the Pirates and the Cardinals pushing from behind? I don't know. I'm honestly not sure about that. That's going to be a really competitive toss up. But I will say, if I had to predict it right now, the Cubs will will get crowned and and you know go to the playoffs. No playing game for them. The NL West. So for much of this 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 season, the Diamondbacks were in first place. Uh, the Rockies have been in the mix as well here and there throughout the season. The Giants, surprisingly, this goes back to what I was just saying, the Giants are in fourth place. They're only five games out of first place. So it's another really competitive, really deeply competitive team, or division, rather. And uh, I'm not surprised. So, so I, I think this is more the trend we're going to see. I think the Dodgers are going to continue to rise. They're obviously on the receiving end of probably the biggest free agent move, or not free agent move, the biggest uh, you know, trade deadline move of the year with Manny Machado. Everyone thought he was going to go somewhere. He's probably one of the best players in the league. He's playing on the failing Baltimore Orioles. They thought they were going to, you know, push him somewhere. And he ends up going to the Dodgers. So the Dodgers, who have just taken first place, it seems like they're just going to get better and better. So the Dodgers, honestly, I, I'd be shocked if they don't win that division as well. And then the NL East is really a three-team race right now as well. The Marlins are out of it. The Mets are way out of it. The Mets are in last place right now to the Marlins, which is crazy. If you remember, which I don't know if you do, but if you're from the Northeast, you might. The Mets started off so hot so hot they're one of the best teams in baseball and they just in in Mets fashion just monumentally collapsed really tough obviously they just got rid of their closers they're already in dump mode they're 14 games out of the lead they're, they're done you can cancel the Mets you can cancel the Miami Marlins who you know they, they were supposed to be bad and they are bad so we, we kind of saw that coming no surprise there but you have the Nationals who are only six games out of first place now I thought the Nationals were the best team in this division throughout the entire year turns out that they, they, they've struggled a little bit but they do have Scherzer they do have Bryce Harper. They ha have star value. They have some hype coming off of this all-star break. Not that they've necessarily capitalized on it, or honestly, to be fair, even had time to. You know, it's only been one weekend worth of games since the all-star break. But I do think the Nationals can make a push here. At the very least, they can make a push for a wild card spot. But, you know, they're only six games out of first place. And, and this is a very, there's a lot of turmoil in this division. The Phillies are in first place, but the Braves are only one game back from them. None of these teams have run away with it. None of these teams are, are, are looking like they are on the verge of running away with it. You know, you have the Cubs and the Dodgers who are, they don't have big leads, but I think they're going to continue to improve those leads and, and win that division. I don't see a team like that in the National League. I'm not confident the Phillies are going to for sure end up in first place. I, I, at this point, I guess I would go with the Braves. I think the Braves will probably get first place, but you don't know. And honestly, with the games left, I feel like the Nationals could make a push and end up in second place. Now, does that put them in position for a wild card spot? Probably not. I don't know. It's tough to say. Right now, they're a 500 team, 49 and 49. Even if they get second place, you would likely see a wild card team come out of the NL Central or the NL West. Because right now, just looking at it right now, Nationals in third place with a 500 record. That puts them last place, fifth place in the NL Central, fifth place in the NL West. You know, the Cubs, the Brewers, the Pirates, and the Cardinals would all be better than them. They'd only be better than the Reds. The Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Rockies, Giants would always all be, all be better than the Nationals. They'd only be better than the Padres. The Nationals, even though they, they are only six games off in first place, it seems like the NL East is really the weak division in the National League. Not quite to the extent of the AL Central, but it seems like the NL East is pretty weak. So whoever wins that division, that's probably the only team coming out of that division. So it's going to be a race between the Braves and the Phillies. Now, I will say, looking at that, there, there is a chance that the Braves or the Phillies end up in that playing game position. If they keep fighting, they, you know, they're staying competitive, no one really pulls away, someone's going to squeak out the division and the other team could end up in the playing game spot. It's really hard to say. At this point, the Pirates are probably out of it. I feel like the Brewers are going to hold on to that, that second place in the NL Central. Right now, they have a 554 win percentage. The Braves have a 552 win percentage. The Diamondbacks have a 540. The Rockies have a 535. So it seems like the NL West is going to have a really good shot at that wild card spot. If I had a pick right now based on the talent in the National League, I'm going Cubs to win the division. Dodgers to win the division and probably Braves to win the division. I think the, I think the Braves will, will come on strong with their talented young team. They obviously have a great team chemistry, which seems to matter in this, this push towards a playoff run. That matters almost more than other things. It's also the advantage thing the Oakland A's have going for them right now. They, they feel like they're feeling themselves, and that's important. Uh, so I think the Braves will, will get first place in the National League. So let's just take all that as facts. You have the Braves, the Cubs, and the Dodgers all winning the divisions. Now the two playing games, who you got? I think the, the Arizona Diamondbacks are probably going to take it. In my gut, saying Brewers. I'm thinking Diamondbacks, Brewers. 
hell of a, a playing game because for a while, for most of the season, the Diamondbacks and the Brewers are both winning their divisions. You know, this late surge by the Cubs and the Dodgers ended up overtaking them, but that's a lot of talent coming out of the National League. If you take those three division leaders and then the Diamondbacks and Brewers, who are, are basically the quality of a division leader, and you put all them in the, the, the playoffs, I feel like that's a very, very, very strong playoff tree coming out of the National League. But yeah, man, I don't know. We'll see. The uh, I feel like baseball is getting fun. It's getting exciting again. You know, I've actually enjoyed covering this on a weekly basis. It's really made me enjoy getting this deep into the game and following the sport to this level, which like I said, as a casual fan, not casual, I'm a pretty big baseball fan, but without the assignment of having to cover it, you're obviously going to pay attention a little bit less. Now it's my job. So I will say I've enjoyed baseball as a whole this year. It's been fun getting back into it, but you can feel it heating up now. This is when it matters. People always say that everything before the all-star break is whatever. This is when the race matters. This is when you really get to see teams come on strong. You see a lot of teams fade too. You see some people overwork their pitchers, then their aces start to fade. And the Red Sox have certainly been guilty of that in the past. I think Alex Cora is doing a much better job of managing innings and things like that while continuing to win. However, things are getting heated now. We're, we're, we're in the final stretch. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, I think I'm going to do something like this before the playoffs or, or you know, throughout the playoffs or whatever. We'll figure it out, some sort of podcast thing. But regardless, in the meantime, I'm going to keep doing those Monday posts. So if you go to disorderly.com, every single Monday, I come out with a baseball post. So please check that out. I have a little fun with it, not too serious. And, uh, you know, of course, I do try to add some some level of knowledge into it as well. I'm not just like fucking around up there, but those will keep coming out. Probably some more podcasts, like I said, around playoff time, but that'll do it for this mid-season podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, first time I've ever done a baseball podcast. I've been podcasting for years, but never baseball. So yeah, hopefully I didn't screw it up too bad. I, once again, am Nick Risner, N-I-C-K-R-I-Z-N-E-R uh, on Twitter. And we're at the Disorderly Media on Twitter, Disorderly ENT on Facebook. The website, again, is thedisorderly.com. Please head over there for the best in sports and entertainment. David St. Martin's always finding great stuff there to post in, you know, in the spotlight and breaking news from the entertainment world. We're trying to, to up the sports content as well. So, yeah, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the baseball season. I hope you continue to root on your teams, unless, of course, they are terrible. I wouldn't know what that's like this year, but I do sympathize with those that are experiencing that right now. So I don't mean to rub it in your face, but you know, the rest of the best team in baseball, no big deal. And that'll be a wrap for me. Thank you guys for listening. Rate, review, subscribe, and tune in next time. Peace.